So in this video, we want to focus on what if there's more than one structure? What if there's two structures that are really similar? How can we tell the difference in what is a good structure or a bad structure? And is there such a thing? So we, let's also think about Lewis dot structures of ions. So if we look at CLO, where this is chlorine and the other one is oxygen, so the valence electrons here are seven plus six plus one to account for the negative charge. So let's go ahead and put our chlorine connected to our oxygen. We have 14 valence electrons, so we can distribute those to four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So now both of these elements have octet, but which one of them owns the negative charge? ClO minus has a negative charge. Is it that they both equally share that, or is one of these two ions more negative or negative? So we're gonna use something called the formal charge. And it tells us who has the negative charge or a positive charge. And the equation for that is the formal charge equals the number of valence electrons minus half of the bonding electrons minus all of the lone pairs. So the formal charge for chlorine is valence electrons, seven, minus half of the bonding electrons which in this case is half of two minus the LPs. So there are six lone pair electrons. So seven minus half of two minus six equals zero. So this means that the chlorine is neutral. So the formal charge of oxygen is six, which is how many valence electrons it has, minus half of two minus six, which equals negative one. Therefore, the charge on oxygen is negative. And we annotate that by drawing a minus sign in a circle. So the formal charge tells us which atom owns the negative charge. So when we think about these equations, this is the, well, let's write this in a different way. So if the formal charge is equal to the valence electrons minus the bond, half the bonds, minus the lone pairs, this is what it owns. This is how many it needs. So a formal charge tells you whether or not it is imbalanced. And in a formal charge, you only get half of the bonding electrons. You may have also seen an equation where the formal charge is equal to the valence electrons minus the lone pairs minus the number of bonds. So any of these are valid ways that you can calculate this. So there are some rules when we think about formal charges. The sum of all formal charges must be equal to the charge on the molecule. It could be positive, neutral, or negative. Molecules prefer small or zero formal charges, as opposed to having a molecule with a minus four charge and, three, and some pluses to balance it out. And the negative formal charge should be on the more electronegative atom, if possible. So let's look at some other examples of NO and CN. So for NO, the valence electrons are 5 plus 6 plus 1. That gives us 12. Where we are going to connect nitrogen and oxygen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we definitely don't have enough to make octet. But we can take this pair and donate it here. And we have nitrogen, double bond to oxygen. And each of these have two lone pairs. So now we can think about the formal charge, where the formal charge of the nitrogen is five minus half of four, whoops, minus four. And that gives you negative one, the formal charge of oxygen is six minus half of four minus four, which is zero. So in this case, we have a negative charge here. Based on the electronegativity trend, 
the negative charges should be on the more electronegative, which is oxygen. So what about if we drew a different structure where instead of just a single bond, we made a triple bond where we have nitrogen, triple bonded to oxygen with a lone pair left over, and oxygen has two lone pairs. We still have our two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. So let's look at the formal charge of nitrogen. Five minus half of six minus two equals zero. For oxygen, it is six minus half of six minus four, which gives us six minus three minus four, negative one. So now we can have a negative charge, although oxygen now has two, four, six, eight, 10 electrons. So we have to ask ourselves, which violation is more preferred? And it turns out in this case, it is more preferred for the nitrogen to have a negative charge than for oxygen to have more than eight electrons. So this is invalid. So now let's look at our other example of the cyanide ion. So our valence electrons, I'm gonna just move this over. VE is four plus five plus one. That gives us 10. So we have carbon connected to nitrogen, two, four, six, eight, 10. Oops, two, four, six, eight, 10. So now we're gonna go ahead and donate two of these to give us C and this structure. And so now we're gonna ask ourselves, who's getting the formal charge? So the formal charge of nitrogen is five minus half of six minus two, zero. The formal charge of carbon is four minus half of six minus two is negative one. So the carbon has a negative charge. And this is the preferred structure. In both of these cases, the rule of the more electronegative atom is not followed. But in most cases, we'll see that to be true. So let's look at the structure of O3. So in this case, we have the valence electrons of three times six, which gives us 18. So I have one, two, three oxygens connected. So then we have two, we'll give octet to everybody on the outside. So we have used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 electrons, put our last two here, so now we need to make octet. So I'm gonna take one set from here and go this way. So we have a double bond. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to color code them red, blue, and green. That way we can calculate the formal charges and be able to easily identify which one we're talking about. So for the red oxygen, it is six minus half of four minus two, zero, sweet. So for the blue one, six minus half of six minus two, that equals plus one. So we have a positive charge. The same as a negative charge, a single plus circle. For the green, we have six minus half of two minus six, and that equals negative one. So we have this. But I guess my question is, how come the double bond is between the red and the blue and not the blue and the green? Because we could have also decided to use these and go here and I've gotten this structure. So now we have two structures and I'll color code these based on the same proximity. And if we look at these and I will draw a square for us to look at the formal charges so that we can tell the difference between the circles and the squares. So the formal charge of the red here is six minus half of two minus six, negative one. The blue looks identical as to the way it did before. So six 
minus half of 6 minus 2 equals plus 1. So we have a plus charge here. And the green one, or the green square in this case, is 6 minus half of 4 minus 2, and that's 0. So these two structures look the same, but different. So it turns out that these are both valid and important. And they're what's called resonance structures. So really what we see is a mix between the two structures. So we have O. We have this structure. And it flip-flops back and forth between this structure. And so we see these move back and forth. And so there's a way that you can draw kind of a hybrid structure where what you would get is this with these double bonds here. And in a resonance structure like this or these hybrid structures, there's no lone pairs. So we don't tend to think about these all the time. But what exactly is resonance? So a resonance structure is two or more equivalent structures which means the molecules have the same connectivity. It's not a resonant structure if the atoms aren't in the same place, but they have a different electron distribution. So let's look at the nitrite ion. So in this case, what we have is NO3 minus, and so we can figure out the number of valence electrons, which is five, plus three times six, plus one, that gives me 24. Put our nitrogen in the center, connect it with three oxygens, start adding our lone pairs. So it turns out that once we create octet on all the oxygens, the nitrogen does not have octet. So one of the oxygens is going to have to give its one of its lone pairs to nitrogen. So we're gonna start with this one. And so that gives us this structure. That looks like this. Whoops, forgot that. So now we have this structure. And so I am going to highlight oxygens that look like this in green and oxygens that look like the other in red. So we can look at the two different formal charges. So for the red oxygen, it is six minus half of four minus four is zero. So for oxygen that looks with green, six minus half of two minus six, negative one. Give our two negative charges, but these have two negative charges. Oh, we forgot to look at nitrogen. So nitrogen is five minus half of eight minus zero equals plus one. Oops. So it turns out that for the nitride ion, we have a positive nitrogen and two negative oxygens. But why is it the one on the left and not the one that points down or the one on the other side? That's what resonance is. Resonance says that this double bond right here could be in any of these three locations. So we're going to draw all the other structures. Actually, I'm going to pause the video, draw, and then restart. So as we look at these structures, one of the things we can realize is that all of the oxygens that look like the green oxygens, so I'm going to make them green on all of them, all have the same charge. So in this case, we have negative, two negatives on each of these. The nitrogens look the same electronically, so they all have the same formal charge. So you could draw a composite structure, so I'll scroll this up and draw that where we have our three oxygens connected, and we have these partial bonds to each one. In these partial bonds, we don't see the charges or the electrons because the partial bonds or these dots show us that they are delocalized all over the different compounds. So this delocalization basically means that it's spread out. So in this case, all three of these oxygens are slightly negative, but none of them have a fully negative charge. So we can start to think about how these work 
and how we can use both resonance and formal charge. So we're going to determine preferred structures. And so in this case, the example is, what is the preferred structure for OCN? So I'm going to draw three different structures, and then we'll use the formal charge in order to compare. So for these three structures of OCN minus, we need to know what are the formal charges. And so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to create a table where we look at oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen for each of these three structures. So for the oxygen in, the, in structure one, we have six minus half of two minus six equals negative one. So we have a negative charge here. Carbon is four minus half of eight, and that equals zero. Nitrogen is five minus half of three minus two, also zero. So this structure looks good, but maybe one of the other ones looks better. So for oxygen in this first one, we have six minus half of, whoops, that should be a four, minus two, hold up, let's just rewrite all that. So we have six minus half of four minus four, that equals zero. So for carbon, it's four minus half of eight equals zero. So nitrogen is four, is not four at all. It's five minus half of four minus four. And in this case, it gives us minus one. So we have a negative on our nitrogen charge. And for our last one, we have six for oxygen, six minus half of six minus two, it's plus one. Interesting, new and different. Carbon is four minus half of eight equals zero. And nitrogen is five minus half of two minus six, which is negative two. So we have a two minus. So when we look at these three structures, they are all technically resonance structures because the atoms are in the same place, but we have a different arrangement of the electrons. So the most electronegative atom is oxygen. So this is our preferred structure. But let's look at the other ones and figure out why they're not. So nitrogen, is less electronegative. So it is not going to accept the negative charge. So that makes us an unpreferred structure. When we think about this structure all the way on the right, where we have both a positive, whoops, a negative and a positive charge, so it is frankly too many charges. So we can think about different ways that the charges can be distributed, but we always want to have the fewest number and we want them localized on the right structure. So let's look at another example. So in this case, we want to draw the structure using this framework. So the atoms are all in the right place. They just don't have any bonds yet. So the valence electrons, we're going to have four, plus three times one, plus five, plus two times six. So that is 24. So now one of the things we can do is we're gonna follow the rules. So we're gonna connect all of our elements. So one, I'm gonna draw bonds between all of them. So now we've connected them and used two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We've used 12, so minus 12. So now we need to create octet. So we'll start by creating octet on both of the oxygens. So we did this, and now we have octet on both oxygens, but the nitrogen needs something different. So I'm going to erase this pair, and I'm going to create a double bond with us. So now we need to look at our formal charges. So the formal charge of the carbon is four minus half 
of 8 equals 0. The hydrogens all look the same, so we only need to calculate it for 1. So the hydrogens, hydrogens are 1 minus half of 2 equals 0. Sweet. Nitrogen. 5 minus half of 8 equals plus 1. So we have a plus charge on the nitrogen. Now our oxygens look different. So we are going to have a blue oxygen up at the top and a yellow oxygen over here. So we'll make a blue, a yellow circle and a blue structure. So for the blue one, it is 6 minus half of 2 minus 6, which gives you minus 1. For the yellow, it is 6 minus half of 4 minus 4, and that's 0. And so this is negative. Now this is a preferred structure, but is it the only structure? So why did we choose the blue oxygen to have a negative charge or make a double bond with the yellow oxygen? So we need to draw the other resonance structure. So in this case, we're going to recreate the framework of carbon and our three hydrogens, nitrogen. We have our two oxygens. Now we know that the the oxygen on the top now has our double bond with the two lone pairs. This one has the three. And we know that the, I'll color these the way that they were up at the top, so they match. So the blue on the bottom looks like the yellow on the top. So the structures of those, the charges are gonna be the same. So we have a positive charge on the nitrogen and the negative charge on the oxygen. So these are our two resonance structures. So this structure gave us the connectivity. And as we move forward, we will see how we can work without known connectivities.